actually, you know, all naval aviators, from the second you come through those gates, your dream is to become a Blue Angel. I mean, that's what you want to be. There's never a question of it. So as you go through flight training, and, you know, pre-flight here at the Naval Air Station, and, you know, you know I, still, I guess they still do it. The first three months, or four months, it was 16 weeks, you don't fly airplanes. Marine DIs train you. So there's a lot of marching. Why they want us to march with rifles, I have no idea. But we did it. Because we had to do it because we were going through pre-flight. While we're doing that, invariably, during the week, when the team was in town, you're on the, you know, on the grinder marching, it's 102, 103 degrees, and overhead come four blue airplanes. And you don't dare do this, because you know, the Marines beat the hell out of you. So you do, there's a lot of this, and the dream really cements itself right there in those first weeks, where you first see those four blue airplanes overhead. And that's what happened to me. It happened to everybody. I'm not confused about that. During that time, as we got a little bit looser toward the end, I walked from the indoctrination battalion and, you know, at the old part of the Naval Air Station, all the way out here. One Monday, probably around 2, 2.30, we had a day, quote, off, an afternoon. And I went to the hangar where the Blue Angels were. And I knocked on the door of the commanding officer whose name was Zeke Cormier, famous man in naval aviation. This is 1955. And this gruff voice said, Arr! And I walked in and I said, Cadet Ventimiglia reporting, sir, I want to be a Blue Angel. And he looked up at me with a cigar in his mouth and said, don't you think you ought to learn how to fly first? And that was my official introduction to the Blues. Six years later, I was in my, I had a bachelor pad in Jacksonville flying a squadron VA-44. And I was having dinner and the phone rang. And it was the commanding officer of the Blue Angels, Zeb Knott. And Zeb said, Duke, he said, we've had a terrible accident and Billy Sherwood was killed. We have to replace him immediately. Uh, I've already cleared this with your commanding officer and with Washington. We took a vote and we want you to join the team. How soon can you be here? To which I responded, hang up the phone and answer the door. And that's, I damn near made it that quick. So I hopped this 300 miles. So I hopped in my, packed the bag, threw it back. Didn't even go back to the squadron. Because he said, you know, he'd already talked to the skipper. So I left that night at about nine o'clock and drove at night to Pensacola. And I had breakfast here in Pensacola the following morning. And that's how I joined the team.